and welcome to Hoots of the Husky Dog Science Explained. In this video we're going to look at the science around the experience of guilt in dogs. Now many owners believe their dogs know certain behaviours are wrong, for example chewing the sofa, and owners also report that their dogs show guilty behaviours after performing such a misdeed, and that the owner is tipped off to the misdeed before they see what the dog has done purely by the dog's display of this guilty behaviour. So essentially what they're saying is the dog knows it's been bad and tells the owner it's been bad by acting guilty. And these behaviours tend to be things like avoiding eye contact, slinking away, low body posture, tucking the tail between the legs and putting the ears back. However, the prevailing opinion among animal behaviour researchers and canine behaviourists is that dogs don't actually feel guilt as they lack the cognitive sophistication to have a sense of right and wrong and instead do or don't do things based purely on the consequences. Therefore, the so-called guilty behaviours are, are actually fear behaviours or a condition response either to the body language of an angry owner or the evidence of the misdeeds such as a chewed up couch cushion which the dog associates with punishment. And it's also been suggested that the so-called guilty look is actually a learned behaviour as it reduces the punishment or avoids the punishment altogether. Now, there have only been four studies on this so far, all of which are listed below if you want to read them. And if you know of any others, please let me know and I'll add them in. So if we start with Volmer, 1997, who tested if the guilty look could be caused by evidence of a bad behaviour, even if the dog themselves hadn't done it. So to use an example, uh, they used a husky named Nikki, who constantly chewed up paper while her owner was out. Uh, and when the owner came home, they would drag Nikki to the paper, rub her nose in, and smack her and shout. However, they found this didn't work, and Nikki was just continuing to shred paper. Volmer had the owners shred the paper himself and leave it in the room for Nikki to find, while he went out for about 15 minutes. And they filmed this and they found Nikki didn't touch the shredded paper or chew anything else while the owner was out. So she hadn't done anything wrong. But when the owner returned, Nikki showed guilty behaviours, i.e. she behaved as if she had been the one to shred the paper. And when the paper was removed and the owner left and came back, Nikki showed no guilty behaviour whatsoever. So if the paper wasn't there, she wasn't showing guilt. If the paper was there, she was showing guilt, even if she hadn't done anything wrong. Now, the guilty behaviours dogs show are actually the same as dogs used to signal other dogs in order to avoid an attack or aggression. And these results suggest that the dog has, dogs had linked the punishment with the evidence of the misdeed, e.d. the shredded paper, and show the incorrectly labelled guilty behaviours as appeasement in an attempt to avoid or reduce the punishment they've learnt is coming. And as the punishment didn't occur when the dog actually shredded the paper, at the time they shredded the paper, they hadn't linked it to the bad behaviour, and so this after-the-fact punishment wasn't effective. Uh, and this was then repeated for other behaviours, such as raiding the garbage and chewing shoes, and they found the same result. And interestingly, they found owners who claimed such after-the-fact punishment worked had actually taught an aversion to the item or scene which the naughty behaviour involved. For example, a dog which was punished in the owner's bedroom for chewing shoes which are kept there, thereafter avoided the bedroom altogether, so couldn't chew shoes in that room, but they would chew them if they were left elsewhere in the house. So they hadn't actually learned chewing shoes is bad, they just learnt, when I'm in the bedroom, sometimes I get smacked, so I'll not go in there anymore. The only issue with this study is they used a very small sample size, so it's difficult to generalise. So we'll look at a more modern study, part one of Hetch 2012, supports the idea that guilty behaviours are actually appeasement behaviours, as their questionnaire found dogs who showed more guilty behaviours got scolded less, suggesting it is a behaviour the dogs had learned to avoid punishment in response to certain cues, but this doesn't mean that the dogs don't feel guilt, as it has been argued the cue punishment is going to occur might be the dog's own knowledge that he's done something wrong. The second part of Hetch's study tested whether dogs' guilty behaviour informed owners they had done something wrong. So they asked owners to forbid their dog to eat a food item and then leave the room and return and looked at the behaviour of the dogs and whether the owners could guess correctly if the dog had disobeyed. And they found there was no difference in the behaviour of obedient versus disobedient dogs when the owner returned, i.e. the dogs who were guilty did not show more guilty behaviours. And when the owners used just their dog's behaviour, they were unable to guess correctly if the dog had obeyed them or not, 
and this suggests the guilty behaviours are not linked to the dog's misdeed, but some other cue. Now, Horowitz, 2009, repeated this experiment, but asked owners to scold the dog if they were told that the dog had disobeyed. And they then looked at the dog's reactions to the four different conditions, so disobeyed and scolded, obeyed and scolded, disobeyed and greeted, and obeyed and greeted. And like with Hetch, Harrowitz found the dog's obedience didn't affect their display of guilty behaviour, further supporting that the so-called guilty behaviours aren't caused by guilt or an awareness of doing something wrong, but some other cue. And they found that those dogs who were physically punished showed a lot more of the so-called guilty behaviour than dogs who were only verbally scolded, suggesting the behaviours actually were a fear or an appeasement signal. Ostergic et al. 2015 again used the same experiment, but instead of looking at the effect of scolding, looked at evidence of the misdeed, i.e. sometimes when the dog didn't eat the treat, the experiment took it away to make it look as if they had eaten it, and sometimes they replaced the treat if the dog ate it to make it look as if they hadn't. So i.e. they tested if the missing forbidden food item might be the cue for the guilty behaviour, like the shredded paper in the first study. So Ostergic found that the dog's expression of guilty behaviour like in the other two studies, was not affected by whether the dog had misbehaved. However, they also didn't find any evidence that the mis- evidence of the misdeed, so the missing food item, led to more guilty behaviours regardless as to whether the dog had obeyed or not. So, to sum up, although there's some discrepancy as to what the cue amongst owner body language or evidence of the misdeed or punishment which causes the guilty look in dogs is, All studies agree it's not caused by guilt or the dog's knowledge of doing something wrong. And furthermore, evidence indicates that punishing a dog because they know they've done something wrong is ineffective, probably because the dog is not aware they've done something wrong, so they don't link the punishment with the wrong action. They link it to whatever is happening at the time. And if you want to know more about the effects of punishment has, both on obedience and other aspects like learning ability and aggressive behaviour, take a look at our other Dog Science Explained videos. Um, there'll be a link in one of the four corners. It's called What are the most effective training methods for dogs? Okay, thank you for listening. What do you think? Do you see guilty behaviours in your dog? Has this video made you look at those behaviours and think, oh well maybe it is fear or maybe it is appeasement rather than guilt? Let me know what you think.